Everybody knows that the queen is powerful, but sometimes you're in a situation where you have to use your queen perfectly in order to be able to win the game. I've created five positions here that will very quickly show you some power moves that the queen has in the end game when there's limited pieces on the board. And we're going to start out with the queen against a pawn on the seventh rank that doesn't yet have support from the king. Another video will cover what happens if the king is already next to the pawn. In this situation, what we need to do is make sure that that king cannot step up next to the pawn to support its promotion. And there's only one place you can put the queen that prevents safe promotion and also stops the king from getting next to the pawn. And of course that is queen c4. And your next move is simply putting the queen in front of the pawn. And look how effective that is against the pawn. You go there, they can never push you out because the king can't come in and attack you. And then you simply bring the king over and they lose because of Zutzvang, right? They have to move their king out of a good position and you get to capture, unstalemate them and finish them off. Now against two pawns here, we want to make sure that the black king simply can't advance and get any closer and support those pawns. Nice simple idea is just bring the queen back to f1. Cover those squares that are on the opposite color that the pawns are on. So now we guard the light squares and that forces them to push up the pawn. Their next move is going to be committing a pawn that creates dark squares or light squares as weak. Doesn't matter, you just move your king. No matter which pawn they move, you go to the opposite color square. If they push the H pawn right now, then you would just push your queen into G2 and that stops all their progress. But in this case, we'll look at the pawn pushing the G2 and now the queen just comes up. And once again, they can't push a pawn without losing it. And then you just bring the king over and win the game. Now, this is something that might happen in one of your games. You have your queen, your opponent has a bishop and a pawn. Nice, easy trick here is to advance your king and queen on the opposite color of the bishop. That way there's no fork, there's no discovery, there's no pin or skewer. So just stay on the opposite color. Obviously if they attack your queen or check you with the pawn, then you'll have to do some moving around. But look how we just stay on the opposite color. Makes it nice and easy. Eventually they'll have to separate their king and their bishop and you can just pick up the bishop with a nice fork, something like this. So advance on the opposite color of their bishop. And now king and queen against king and rook. Now in this end game, you're going to make progress against your opponent's king and rook by pushing your king and queen forward carefully, especially when that king is against a the wall, they have some stalemate traps. So you do have to be careful to not allow your opponent to sacrifice their rook at just the right time to create a stalemate. In any case, this is the position that you want to get to, but you want it to be black's move. Right now it's white's move, and the question is how does white change that and make this black's move? Let's have a look. We're going to triangulate with the queen. You might be familiar with that expression from king and pawn in games. So the queen comes over check, and no good options for the black king, so he heads into the corner. He doesn't want to get mated by going to f8. Now check. If the rook blocks, then it was going to be mate all the way in the corner at a8. So the king runs over and the queen comes back to the square. Exact same position, but now it's black's move. And why is this an advantage? Let's check out some options. First of all, if the king goes to f8, you can simply pin the rook and then capture it. If the rook goes to h7, that's checkmate. That was easy. If the rook goes to a7, now a couple of checks and we can pick up the rook. Once again, if the rook blocks, the queen goes back into a8. So the king comes over to g8, check, picks up the rook. And then finally, if they play their most challenging line, rook down to g1, check, check, check. And once again, if they block with a rook, then the queen comes all the way to the corner for mate. And then this check picks up the rook. That's it for queen against rook. And then finally, when your opponent promotes that queen in the corner and it's supported by the king, a lot of times if your king is close enough, well, if your king is close enough, you will be able to have a series of checks that will win the game. It's all about realizing that your opponent has limited options. Make sure you're not letting them block the check with their queen and play a check, for example. Here, check, and now they can't scoot over because if they go to e8, back rank mate, if they go to 
G8 in your cheek checkmate. And so instead they go to G7. Our queen zigzags in and get a little closer. Once again, if they are going to F8, check and mate. And if they go to H7, now, the somewhat surprising move, if you've never seen this before, King F7, and the game's over. Our next move will be a deadly queen check, or they give their queen away and we take it. That is power techniques for the queen. Very basic examples for you. That's it. I'll check you later.